Yes, the screen is sharing. We can start. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, AIS, for giving me this opportunity. And I really appreciate the efforts of AIS in these tough times when they have showed really good uh, leadership qualities. So today I'm going to talk on astigmatism management during cataract surgery. So our journey is going to start with the preoperative considerations, then intraop, and in the end, postop considerations. So the journey begins with a careful slit lamp examination, where there are so many conditions which can be diagnosed, which are responsible for regular or irregular astigmatism. And also important is the dry eye and MGD, because we require pristine ocular surface uh, to have a very good uh, astigmatic uh, result. We also should know the T-bot of the patient because the reading has to be taken, any reading has to be taken before the tear starts breaking down. Now, this is a video regarding a virion, but the principles of taking a, a reading uh, are equal for everybody. I'm sorry for that. What is happening? So, a variant takes a high quality uh, image and keratometry, and the data is transferred to the working station. Before you start the reading, it is very important that the eye is untouched. That means not even any eye drops are put. The first, first and the foremost important thing is the head position. Keep the chin right into the chin raise. Ask the patient to look at the fixation target in the center. The head should be straight, not tilted and the lateral canthus should uh, match the black mark on the side bar. The forehead should also be touching the headrest. Now, move the machine from one side to the another side to ensure that the eyes are in the correct horizontal position. Ask the patient to bring frequently in between. Blue mark means you are taking a K reading. Move, move the joystick slowly to and fro till you get a correct reading. The yellow mark uh, means high quality image is being taken. You get a message that measurement is okay at the bottom of the screen, but it is always better to uh, check it yourself. So first we start by checking the LED of the keratometry. They should be properly focused, not diffused. Then we go to the scleral markings, the limbus and the uh, pigmentation. Check that the pupil is properly detected and adequate cornea is exposed. On the side, there are three dots. All these three need to be red. Okay, uh, but that is not all. We need to know more about keratometry. First thing, calibrate and validate. Unless and until we have to calibrate every day and whenever there is a change of user. So unless and until you calibrate, uh, calibrate and validate, the readings have no meaning. We should know what kind of keratometer we are using, its refractive index, and the diameter on which it is giving us the K reading. Centration and fixation are very, very important for you to get correct reading. And we have to try for three nearly identical readings so that it means that the readings are predictable and reproducible. Corneal topography has achieved a lot of importance um, in uh, astigmatism management along with keratometry to find out whether the patient has regular or irregular astigmatism, the posterior corneal astigmatism, tear film quality, aberration profile, and also pachymetry if you are interested in LRI, then the signs of ectasia in the eye, and so on. If it is a post-refractive uh, surgery case, then there are more ne things need to be known, but I will not go into the details here.
okay this is a case of can you say uh, abmd which was missed and patient landed up with a surprise just to give as an example for post refractive surgery cases there is a holiday report which comes on pentagram which is of very high uh, value in one screen you get whatever you require for a post refractive surgery cataract and astigmatism calculation so now we have to have three instruments and each of them giving three reading nearly identical so that if they are reproducible select one of them and compare them so you see this area here now if they are nearly matching that means the cylinder is within point uh, one diopter and axis is within axis, uh, axis is within 5 degrees it means that this is a good reading we can go ahead with any of the machines if they are somewhat matching that means the astigmatism uh, is between 0.1 to 25 diop 0.25 diopters and the axis is between 5 to 10 better to go for barrett's median key this is an excellent tool developed by barrett which allows us to feed in three k readings of three machines and it will tell us what k and axis to use if the readings are helter skelter there no match at all consider manual keratometry now this looks very tight actually but uh, in reality is not so if you have proper protocol and train the people properly tell the technicians the importance of getting good k readings you will be able to hit this uh, consistently which calculate uh, then comes the calculation uh, three calculations to be done let us look at them one by one si previously we are using mean si but now we have to use centroid si because this considers the direction also okay as you can see in the adjoining figure the mean si and centroid si values are different you can go by default value of 0.1 but it is better to calculate for yourself pre operative consideration for which formula to use virginize barrett tori calculator uh, the, which is a university formula post refractive surgery barrett truke but i also would like to take help of acrs website whenever there is a ultra uh, gold stand ratio like post keratoplasty keratoconus corneal scar you go for barrett tk that is a tk stands for total keratometry that is the vector summation of the actual readings of the anterior and posterior corneal astigmatism and if you have a refractive surprise barrett rx formula is there so you can see that our dependence on barrett has increased hugely what is our objective in the surgery our objective is to ensure that post operatively patient is left with a 0.5 after cylinder and this net cylinder you will come to know if you look in the barrett uh, calculator over here you can see so if the net cylinder is coming to less than 0.65 leave it alone if it is between 0.65 and 1 diopter uh, i prefer lri net cylinder is more than 1 diopter toric i will of course everybody will have their own choices there are some people who do not like lri another objective is that when you are dealing with an atypical eye like keratoconus our aim is just debulking the astigmatism not completely getting rid of it and treat only when the central 3 mm shows regular astigmatism unlike in this case now lri plan let's go very quickly consider vavika saurabh tool because it is the only tool which incorporates posterior corneal astigmatism while planning and it is only meant for small cylinders i do lri uh, there are limitations but it increases the number of cases in which you can do trifocals lensex and other flat machines have made it a elegant procedure and the repeatability reproducibility rate uh, is uh, much better recurrence is much less when planning lri look at the area where you are going to do lri pick up the lowest pachymetry and 85% of the that uh, depth of that should be the depth of your knife and you can realize that on both the side temporally and nasally sometimes you get different depth now you go to the day of the surgery the day of Uh, surgery has arrived we have to mark the axis marking can be done two ways one is by means of a pen and second is a digital marker let us look at this video for slit lamp marking put an eye speculum after okay, anesthetic eye drop with a sterile bud dry the inferior and superior limbus and conjunctiva 
ink the marking ends of the toric axis marker make a thin slit beam passing through the center of the cornea at 90 degree axis mark superiorly and inferiorly for measuring the axis pass a narrow slit through the apex and center of the mark where it crosses the limbus here the superior mark is at 90 and the inferior at 93 degrees so what is important over here is that previously we just marking it now we are marking it and measuring it whether it is exactly at 90 degrees or whatever your choice is but you also have a non digital uh, uh, the digital marker non ink marker it is not necessary that you have to, you should have very on uh, if we do marking properly you can still get a good result but very on certainly improves the elegance of the surgery so first of all it is a very high quality keratometer this very on it will take images of the eye in the opd and in the operation theater and match them the process called registration and because of that you don't require marker Uh, ink marker and it also bypasses many potential sources of errors like head tilt and cyclotorsion it also does calculations for us and it also increases the accuracy of the placement of the lens in the eye now this is a diagram number 1 uh, this is taken in the opd this is diagram number 2 i hope you can see i'll be able to show you by pen Okay, so this is uh, diagram number one. Uh, you can see in the OPD uh, uh, taken in the OPD. This is diagram number two. This is taken pre-doc condition on lenses, and this is after doc or post-doc image. So first one is match with two, and two is match with match with three, and therefore one is match with three to complete the registration process. This uh, looks very difficult to talk, but in reality it is very simple. and uh, we also have surgeon also a lot of control over the situation in non lensic surgery normal cataract surgery you do not require the step 2 now one of the main, there are many features of varian but i would like to show you one feature that these two eyes look same but look here this is yellow and this is green because the tracking track ball is absent and track ball is present here this eye is oriented in a better way for the surgeon and the placement of the lens is going to be much better so the variant takes into consideration so many small points because of which our results are good once you have done the marking comes the surgery and there are three steps we need to understand about the surgery uh number 1 the incision has to be very good number 2 the ccc and visco washing out of the from under under the eye hole so whatever type of incision you do we have to be very very consistent with it i like to follow what dr abhasada taught me how to take the incision that means what is that mean yeah so uh, registration is done while taking the incision press the metal or diamond blade and go in the towards the corneal apex when you achieve sufficient length of the tunnel change the direction downwards to enter the anterior chamber and then go straight ahead whatever you do you uh, be very consistent with it very on us additional feature that it gives you excellent guidelines for making a ccc and very important that your ccc is central and circular and of the same degree every time the third most important point while doing toric iol is removing the visco from under the surface if you don't do it you will find the lens rotated next day so first uh, put the lay, take the lens to the orientation just short of its final position remove the visco and put it in final position okay ah uh, there is one point about parallax you can see that over here the marker uh, line and the three dots connecting uh, the toric uh, the axis of the toric they are parallel to each other but not overlapping over there over here they are overlapping both these positions are correct but this situation has occurred because of parallax because the marker is on the corneal surface 
whereas the three dots are in the entry chamber so as long as the line joining these three dots on the either side of the lens are parallel to the marker you are doing good Mm-hmm. Most operatively, I'm listening to you. Shekhar, this was an excellent, excellent poll. This was an excellent poll you showed, but we need to sum it up uh, very soon, Shekhar. Uh, can I, the, sir, do I have one or two minutes? Yes. Yeah, Only. I'll finish in one or two, one minute. So, most operatively, uh, all the everything is ready, but it is very important to analyze our data, and we have to take refraction on second, seventh, and thirtieth day. and rotate the eye only if the spherical equivalent of the sur- uh, refractive surface is zero otherwise better to explant first seven days you should not rotate the eye because if there is a corneal edema but rota- uh, rotation has to be done before three weeks because after that the lens starts sticking to the eye and use this formula as i already added alluded to and i will i would like to show this diagram where the patient has a slight corneal edema okay and you can see that the internal lip is open this will cause astigmatism of 0.75 so unless and until this is settled say 7 days don't think that you are getting a surprise thank you very much thank you